How can a country go from being the murder capital of the world to the safest in the entire Western Hemisphere, even safer than the United States? Well, certainly not without any controversy. The crackdown on gangs intensifies in El Salvador. Concerns that human rights are being violated. El Salvador had for a long time been notorious for its record high levels of crime and gang violence, which led to thousands fleeing the country for a better future elsewhere. In the last few years, however, a new leader was elected who described himself as the world's coolest dictator. And he decided that the time of the country being run by gangs was over. In the space of a few years, the reputation of El Salvador has completely turned around. And it is clear that in this moment in time, many Salvadorans who were forced to flee the country over the past few decades are looking back at the changes with hope. Canta la canción, por. And in fact, Amar's best friend from university, Oscar Jr.'s dad, Oscar Sr., is one of them. In the 80s, he was forced to flee fearing for his life. He made a dangerous and terrifying trek all the way to the United States and built a life there. His son, Oscar Jr., is now a college-educated and successful serial entrepreneur. At a time where division in the U.S. seems at an all-time high, we believe that stories that embody what the American dream truly stands for can remind us of the importance of standing together during challenging times. Now, Oscar Sr. just happened to have taken his retirement after working two full-time jobs for decades to provide for his family. And so, we wanted to celebrate this moment by surprising him with a trip back to his home country and explore its changes and beauty together. Through Oscar Sr.'s lens, we hope to learn more about the transformation El Salvador has been through as we prepare to embark on a journey together to this mysterious little country ruled by a so-called dictator. Well, citizen in Miami, it's been great. Time for the next adventure. The adventure begins. I'm gonna pick up Oscar Sr., who I haven't seen in 10 years. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. It's we been, made it, man. We made it, man. <laughs> it's been 10 years. My 10 God. years. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? I think we are adventure partners. And you're, you're taking my spot, so I'm not joining. You're joining Yes Tier Now officially. My English is not too good, though. I just want to try the best I can. People understand your energy, intentions, and your English. There you go. <laughs> That, that, that's the nickname of, your, of the group. The Cuatro, Cuatro Bandidos. bandidos. <laughs> you know Bandidos mean? Yeah. Bad guys. Oh, yeah. 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 Amazing. Vámonos. Vámonos, señor. Full Globe Vlogger app. I'm already feeling convinced that he should join the Estere full time. <laughs> Oh, I see him. Haven't seen that in five years. Five years, bro. Yeah. Five years. We good to see you. <laughs> now we get it. two yeah, legends, back. four bandidos. Now <laughs> we first person to believe in like the crazy ideas it was it was this guy. First co-founder. Amar met Oscar Jr. over 10 years ago, back when they were in college. Together, they worked on Amar's first startup app and even traveled to Egypt together to pursue Amar's dream of climbing the Great Pyramids of Giza. They've remained close friends throughout the years, but hadn't properly seen each other since Amar's birthday in 2019. Oscar was raised in America, and while he's visited El Salvador before, this trip would allow him to experience the changes of his motherland through the eyes of his father, who was forced to flee it. How are we feeling? Oh. Great, man. We go to the El Salvador. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling going back now? Cool. I haven't seen it since all these wild changes I've been hearing about. Considered one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Yeah, yeah. Like the murder capital of the world. Yeah. So now being a place. <laughs> You'll see when we get there. <laughs> but before we take off to El Salvador, I want to tell you about a tool that we've been using for years now and that we are actually installing in this very moment on the plane and that we are so excited to be actually sponsoring with on today's video. Arlo, who are offering $3 off your first eSIM purchase with the code YESTHEORY3. Whenever we land in a new country, instead of having to wait in line at the airport for a new physical SIM card or relying on data roaming, which can be really expensive, we use Arlo, which is the world's first eSIM store that gives you access to eSIM cards, digital SIM cards that are pre-installed in your device. Which means that while we're abroad in a new country while using our phones for coordinating, navigating, or translating with locals, 
were always connected at a cheap price. Being trusted by 10 million travelers worldwide, including us, Aerolo is super easy to use. Just download the app, search for more than 200 countries and regions to find your destination, and follow the simple instructions to have your eSIM ready for instant connectivity as soon as you land. Aerolo prices are some of the best out there. And if you end up going for longer than expected, which happens to us very often, you can easily extend your package in the app and you get to keep your home phone number. Just remember before you start, check if your device is compatible with eSIM technology. Scan this code on screen or use Yes Theory 3 in the link in the description below for $3 off your first eSIM. Okay, now back to El Salvador. This is this guy's motherland. This was one of the nicest like immigration entry points I've ever had. Everybody was smiling, everybody was nice. I'm telling you, man, in El Salvador is where everybody's a smile. Oh man, imagine this is my my city, my town, my people, man. Yeah. I feel it's so exciting to be in my country now. What are you most looking forward to? Uh, to see my friends, my house. Yeah. This is exciting. I yeah. have been a long time not be here, but it's a lot of changes now. Tomorrow, we are heading back to the house that Oscar fled over four decades ago, and we'll hear about how he made it. And to celebrate his hard work and retirement, we've also prepared some surprises for him on the last day, including his first ever helicopter ride above his beloved country. But first, we wanted to meet some locals. What's the first stop? What's the first stop on the Well, we're planning to go. To, I think everybody want to go yeah, to Pusa, right? right? Can you, what is the Pusa? Can you explain to us? What is the pupusa? Yeah, what is it? It's a, it's a coral. He looked at me kind of offended. He's like, what the f what kind of question is that? <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Pupusa is a food. Uh, do you want coco? Everyone, yeah. Dale, si. Yes. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, there's a straw. <laughs> what were you going to just do? <laughs> well, Necessary first stop in El Salvador. Yeah, what year was it? 1981, 1980, something like that. No English. No English, yeah. And Jesus Christ, my friend. That's my hard part for myself to bid goodbye to my mom. Because I never separate with her. That day when I say goodbye, that's the most hard part of my life. She's crying, he hugging me and say goodbye. But they had take the bus to Guatemala and start the nightmare is coming. Wow, the dream. It's not easy to come to America those days. Oh man, look at this. We made it, man. We made it. Thank God. This is uh, San Salvador capital, my friend. This is like a dream for me. For start the nuevo en El Salvador. To be it again in my country. Is yeah. it your first time in Salvador without your dad being... Yeah, this is my first time, yes. Not wish I had my father here, because all the time when I came to El Salvador, you're always hanging with him. But now, God take it. But for heaven, they heaven. see me anyway. Exactly. the famous pupusa that you've been talking about for the past five hours. Well, people in El Salvador don't use pork. Okay. You eat with it in. Like this. It's hot. Very hot. Whoa, man. That's nice. Walking around the streets here, it's hard to guess that this was just a few years ago, the murder capital of the world. Walking around with cameras, feels very safe, it feels very calm. People seem fairly happy. Wow, look at the guy with the big ass gun right there. Oh, yeah. This is the most beautiful place to see in San Salvador. Oscar they, they for call, they Minister call. of Tourism they, in El Salvador. They, 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 Mr. They, Bukele, please, if you watch this video, <laughs> this man. The video, man. Thank you, Bukele. <laughs> you keep the city in this city. I like it though. Years ago, you can sit in like this. You man. can't. You can't. Yeah. The gangs come over to say, hey guys, come on, can you help me out for 20 
a couple of dollars. Now look at this. Yeah. It's open up to 10 p.m. It's everything is good yeah. to see those things. This is a lot of change, man. This is amazing. The big question surrounding our journey right now is how exactly did El Salvador turn its dangerous reputation around in a matter of years? Sometimes you would see gang members, to be honest, and that'd be scary. When you see people covered in tattoos, your heart would drop just with all the stories you would hear. And why are some calling it a dictatorship? Well, the answer is all within the hands of the current president, Nayib Bukele. Elected in 2019, Bukele made it his mission to take El Salvador back from the gang violence that had plagued it since the end of the Civil War in 1992. One way he did this was by increasing police and military funding by a whopping $109 million. But in March of 2022, after a particularly violent weekend of gang violence which resulted in over 60 homicides, Bukele made the controversial decision to deploy the military and announced a state of emergency that suspended certain constitutional rights allowing the police to arrest suspected gang members without the usual legal procedures. As part of this crackdown on gangs, over 80,000 people were arrested. And while these policies remain debated to this day, it led to the dramatic decline of El Salvador's murder rate from the highest in the Americas to now the lowest. However, while these drastic measures improved El Salvador's safety, they also made Bukele a controversial figure, leading many to accuse him of starting a dictatorship. Still, he holds popularity with most El Salvadorians and was voted in for a second term in February of this year. Oscar would have been living in El Salvador during most of the struggles of the past few decades. And we were now about to find out together how much it has truly changed today. So many people are like waving, saying hi, like randomly. Multiple people have said, hey, welcome, enjoy the country. It's nice to be in a place where you can feel this hopefulness and excited energy and people seem relaxed and nights like this were not really as possible as they are now, especially walking around with expensive cameras. Let's go explore. A few days before arriving, I had posted on Instagram saying that we're gonna be here and we're gonna tell a story. A few people reached out and one of them is Amelia who recently moved from London back to El Salvador. We're gonna meet her, hear from her and see what she what she thinks of all that. Can you, you share a little bit about your story yeah, with me? Yeah. About how, yeah. Should we share yes, story? My story is that I was born and raised in El Salvador. There was a lot of political conflict and unfortunately my mom was a part of it. Which meant that she had to escape the country. I left to, the, to London for a better future. And she's like, why are you going back to El Salvador? You're crazy. What's wrong with you? And I'm like, no, you know. I want to go back, you know, I want to I wanna get to experience my country. I think because I was robbed from the opportunity of living in my country, you know, I, I loved El Salvador. I had everything that I wanted in this country. It's been amazing. I mean, there's been so much change. Years ago, you couldn't come here and walk freely. You used to find heads on the floor, people decapitated on the, on the street. And this was the gang's way of saying, hey, we have the power. But I mean, now, yeah, now you can walk the streets. Safely. The only thing that hasn't really changed is the economy. The economy is still very bad. You know, you see kids out here working, really young kids being exploited. Uh, the salary is very bad. It seems like the pre when the president came, he made a lot of unconstitutional decisions here to like seize certain powers and have control in a way that allows him to bring about this change. Are you more skeptical on on the intention of the government or, or him as a leader? It's never bad to be acceptable for what he has presented to us is that he wants total control all the time. He put a, a state of emergency in place. So essentially he was only meant to see for one day. But actually he keeps extending it, which means that we have years. no right. We could be wrong. We I hope, we wrong. hope that. And I, hope so. I, I really said it, you know, like, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Capitan is speaking right now. We're going to the most beautiful city in El Salvador, Ilovasque. That's my city. That was a massive convoy. First we thought it was one military truck and then we just was like about 10 different trucks with two, I think, that, that had a a bunch of inmates in them. Had you seen that before? 
Never, never. never. And you see those uh, prisoners to put in the jail because the jail, the main jail, is uh, almost uh, 20 minutes from here. Oh, they're going. So they're is going that, to the main one. Oh yeah, that's go to the big one, the new jail. And they did not take security in transporting them lightly. Right. It was like at least like a hundred soldiers, right, in those like eight trucks. That's crazy. Oh man, imagine to see my street, my people, my friends. Yeah. Really nice. Happy to see it through your eyes. Thank you. But the thing is, uh, so many changes, you know, it's kind of confusing for me because of those days when I was here, everything is empty, it's a small town. Now look, at it. it's a big city now. Long time, it's only two cars in the city. Now look at this, this is crazy. Yeah. The main street is my grandfather's name. This is Avenida Carlos Bonilla. That's my grandpa, he was a doctor. The main hospital is the name is Dr. Rafael Bonilla. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my street. Look at this, it's amazing. Before it was a stone's street. This is the house, the yellow one. Oh, right here. wow. That's the street. I was sitting here with a bunch of friends every day, play football, soccer here, man, with a plastic ball. Oh, it's amazing. But look at this. How do you feel to just be here and see it's where your great. dad started and where your life is now? Like this guy paid for my high school. I went to Waldorf High School, which is very, it's an affluent high school in the city of San Francisco. The respect that I had for my parents was different than what other kids were having for their parents. And this guy would just cram me with like, Gordo! You know, like the intensity of love and just because you, you want so much for your kid, that's what you've gone through to get to where you are, yeah. you're not going to accept anything else, so. Mm. And it started here. And this little thing, this Come is on. MTV Crib. <laughs> oh, we're just, are we trespassing right now? Are we trespassing? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> when I see this place, I bring my mind, my mother sitting there with a chair, a smoky a cigarette. They called me Neto. Neto? Yes, ma'am. Can you put water to the plant? <laughs> they pay me one colon for doing this. I always say, nah, you all the time. I always nag <laughs> because I'm so tired. I'm, every day, 5 p.m. has to rate a hundred plants because in the back is all full of plants. My mother loved plants. What, what were you going through in the 80s that made you feel, I gotta get out of here and go somewhere else? It's because I don't have a no future here. At the time I left, I was almost 19 years old. The political situation was so, so dangerous those days. So many friends, I lost it. They killed them. Rodil, his name is Rodil, they killed him. Diogenes, they killed. Mario was killed. Now, Maximus me. <laughs> I say, no way, I can't ask to be here. <laughs> At that time, I just connect with Coyote. So this is like an illegal escort that takes you yeah. from yeah. here through Mexico all the way up. I mean, I guess through Guatemala first and then Yeah, they have a, those Coyotes have a connection with another Coyote, like a chain. How do you cross the borders? Was that dangerous? In Tijuana, to go to the United States, we walk all night long. Were well, you walked into the U.S. at night? Yes. We're crossing mountains in the dark. Everybody make a line. We touch each other to see the line. And then finally, they told us, okay, guys, we are in America now. When they told me like that, man, oh, my dream is a dance, God. Because all the way I go, man, I'm praying. Say, my God, please. I want to go. I don't want to go back to El Salvador. I almost, I, I get emotional thinking about the sacrifice that you made and the, you know, the beautiful life that you created. I just make a promise myself, sacrifice myself, I don't care, but he never gone through life like I'm going through. I'm looking desperate for a job, then I don't know how to say I'm looking for a job. I don't know how to express myself. I just, trabajo, no, I want to work. <laughs> and the guys, they already know what I'm talking about. They're acting like a, what? I don't know. No, I'm sorry. And I got any kind of job. My first job was 
construction. I never <laughs> had a hammer when I was here. <laughs> we live in 10 people in one studio. Wow. Everybody's laid down and sleep in the floor. You, so at this point, you got a job where? A UCSF Medical Center. What were you doing in those rooms? What, what was your job? Cleaning after to surgery, heart transplant. Whoa. And I met Christina in the hospital. She That's was, Oscar's mama. <laughs> That's Oscar's That's my mama. <laughs> Two full-time jobs. Five. I start six. six in the morning to 2.30 p.m. and start the other one 4 p.m. to 1.30 in the morning. Wow. At the time I go to home, it's almost 3 in the morning. I have to get up 6 again. Yeah. What's the main lesson you think you got from, from your dad? He's always told me, he always says this, he's like, Gordo, if you don't jump, you don't know if you can swim. So, I think I'm one to kind of give it a shot. And if I sink, well, I know I sink, but at least I give it a shot. Wow. Now I have my son and I'm retired for two jobs. This guy running into the jungles, <laughs> crossing borders, sleeping in the buses, cleaning. Now I'm successful. I have a house, ten scarf, I have a beautiful wife, beautiful son, beautiful family. But this is not coming from heaven to the earth. You have to work it out. Be conscious, no matter what. Now we have to enjoy it to go eat pupusas. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so many things, whatever you find. Do you think they have real Rolexes here? Estamos haciendo unas filmaciones, señora, pero le podemos hacer unas preguntitas sencillas. ¿Cómo usted observa la vida ahorita actualmente? Siempre, siempre ha habido tiempos difíciles. Pues también más complicada porque todo está más caro. Pero muchas veces se debe porque como hay escasez, ¿verdad? Entonces la escasez nos lleva a que todo esté más elevado de precio. Pues nosotros no podemos hacer nada porque como adaptarnos. Siempre sencillamente adaptarnos a la situación, ¿verdad? Muchas gracias. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. Right now, we're landing to Suchi Toto. Please remain sitting and don't forget your luggage, please. <laughs> <laughs> show my wife. You know she's gonna watch the video, right? Of course, yes. <laughs> you know you have a guy that's filming the thing. Yeah, this guy is getting paid right now to film you. <laughs> It's just stunning here. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain is speaking right now. We take out the big boat. Wait, is the captain filming at the same time as he's doing an announcement? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of captain is this? If you know you can fix it, why you worry? Uh -huh. If you know it's not can fix it, why you worry? Don't worry. Be happy. Life is very short, my friend. That's true. When you true. die, you let everything. Nothing is yours. Today is a gift. God give it to you. Mm. Tomorrow, they don't promise nothing. Learn. And you're going to be the same age like me. 
Young guys, strong. <laughs> For the last day of our journey, we decided to take a road trip to one of El Salvador's most breathtaking locations, Lake Coatepeque, which is actually a lake inside of the crater of an old volcano. And once there, we had a few final surprises up our sleeve for Oscar Sr. This is the most famous volcano in El Salvador, Del Boquerón. Uh, you know, you go all the way to the top, you see the crater. Yeah. It's beautiful. How, live, how people live in there. Look at this. That's... I mean, you see the tinfoil roof, like tinfoil straight up houses over there. Lamina. Mansions. That's Lamina. what I'm saying. Just only cross the street, you see the different mansion in the right side. Really poor people living there with the laminas, yeah. little piece of wood and roof. That's some air. Why so many people, they don't have nothing? And other people, they have a lot. Yeah, yeah. They waste money for little stupid things. Yeah. This is unfair. This hurt my heart, you know, it broke my heart to see people like this. Like, uh, you can see it. This mother is a single mother with carrying three kids. And they show 100% they don't have uh, no education, those kids, because mm. I don't see no school around this area. Mm -hmm. But the government, they don't care a thing, maybe. But they has to do something about it. Yeah. Because it's unfair. Yeah. But you have more hope now. I, I, I think this is uh, the time now with the new government to focus on those people. Yeah. And I hope it's going to get better and better. Since Oscar had been deprived of his country for decades, we decided to surprise him first with a jet ski, and soon he'll find out about the heli ride. Scarito, are you ready? I'm ready, 100 percent. 100 percent. There you go. <laughs> I think we're going on jet skis. I, I'm professional about those things, you know. What? Really? <laughs> ready, Captain? I want to show you how to try those toys. <laughs> <laughs> No, this thing is no sirve esta cosa. <laughs> <laughs> right, up, right away, we just had a crash. Both Oscar stepped over the jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> we got the más cerca, pues, man. Ay, amor, te quiero dar mis días. También darte mis noches llenas de amor. Last surprise. There's one more thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> one of my favorite memories of my life is being able to take my father on a flight over Egypt, over the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So for the past week or so, we've been working with some friends on organizing a helicopter flight so that you can see your home country from above this whole thing. Let's go, man. <laughs> Let's go. This is going to be a good one. Have you, ever, have you ever been to a helicopter? No, not even dreaming. Man. <laughs>
the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen in my life. And there was moments where I got really emotional seeing Oscar just like take it all in and thinking about 19 year old Oscar who had to leave this country in the roughest of circumstances. Jesus Christ, man, this is a good experience. I never ever in my life am dreaming to be in the helicopter around my country. It's so beautiful. When I just left this country, I never, not even take a bus. Now imagine they change a lot. Yeah. To be in the helicopter around to the, my country is amazing. Thank you. Thank of you course, so much. Thank you. Thank you God. Amazing. This is the best trip I ever, <laughs> ever been. I never enjoy like this. Oh, Jesus. Thank you guys. You can't choose where you were born. And despite being born in some of the roughest of circumstances, Oscar chose to risk his life for a better future and worked for decades to get his children to a better starting point than he did. El Salvador's future seems both filled with lots of potential, but also remains highly uncertain. It's an experiment like never done anywhere else before, and only time will tell if it will work or crumble. To save a country from corruption and gang violence is an almost impossible feat. So one can only hope for the people of El Salvador's sake that their future will be brighter than the one they've had to endure these last decades. Oscar is now in retirement, soaking in the true American dream that he brought to life and can travel back to his country without fearing for his safety. At a time in our culture where individualism seems to be more and more celebrated, hearing stories like this of true sacrifice and love for one's family reminds us of what truly matters in life. Nothing else ultimately, if not for those close to us, we get to share it with. The best trip ever, man. I don't have a word to say. Here, you can hold it, you can hold it. If you wanna follow our next video, just give me a light and just follow yes the theory. sick and comfort, discomfort. Yes theory. Yes theory. It's, it's called Yes Theory. Yes Theory. Yes theory. Yeah. And visit to El Salvador. This is amazing city, amazing country. See you next time, next video. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck! <laughs>